Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. I just stopped by the Downey FL headquarters and picked up one of the newer uh, Nixon offerings. This is the Ozark TW. Gonna be doing a box to bench review today. Um, this is an unregulated air gun. It fills to 250 bar. It comes with four magazines. Uh, the one I grabbed is a 22 cal, and this is right off the shelf in the warehouse. Um, they come in a really nice hard case. And you wind up with uh, oil and spare O-rings and things like that in case you need to do a rebuild. Comes with a screw on foster fitting. Pretty typical stuff. But here she is. Threaded barrel up front. Side lever cocking. Adjustable trigger. Foster fitting right there. Forward and back multiple stops in between. Looks like a six position stock. You also have an adjustable cheek riser. So you can get that perfect level. So I'm gonna head down to the bench. I'm gonna get a scope mounted, get some air in it, because she's empty right now. And then we're gonna take some shots and I'll let you know what I think. Stand by. Before we get to shooting, there's a couple things that I like straight off the bat. Um, one is Picatinny rail up top, makes it really easy to mount a scope. Um, I've got an Element Optics Helix. This is a 6 to 24 by 50. It's a second focal plane scope, perfect uh, for this rifle using some UTG mounts. These are quick release mounts, so once you have it set up, you can take it on and off the rifle. If you have another rifle you want to put it on, no problem there. I love this stock. Um, I will try to give a couple of close-up pictures of it, but it's just got such a, a nice feel to it. The grip feels good in the hand. Um, it's a comfortable either thumb up position or wrap around. I think probably wraparound is a little bit better. Um, you've got a 250 bar fill bottle on it, and I've attached a Sabre Tactical bottle clamp on there just so I can reach out with the bipod and get some nice stable shots. Easy to adjust the buttstock to wherever you want it. Um, right now, I've got it with the cheek riser all the way down. Um, which seems to be working for this, this setup. I think the first thing we're going to do is fill up a magazine and then get you some chronograph numbers. The magazines are easy to fill. You've got a nice big arrow, and all you have to do is spin it in the direction of the arrow. Uh, then you're going to drop one of your pellets skirt first into the hole in the back. And once you've got that set, you flip it over, and then it's simply a matter of dropping your pellets in one at a time. You got 12 22 caliber pellets in each magazine, and she comes with four of them. Um, so, no shortage of magazines. You do have to pay attention to how they load. Um, and I want to just talk about this for a minute because it might throw you off the first time you try it. You have to cock the handle back, and then they load. From the right side to the left side, you'll see there's this bar here 
that corresponds to a cutout there. And if you try to feed them in this way, there's a little lip on the edge of the magazine. It won't work. You cannot put them in this way. You have to go from right to left, and then you take them out to the right. So just something to be aware of um, because it can save you some frustration if you, uh, if you pay attention to that. I'm going to um, get the chronograph ready and we're going to give you a string. So this is a full 250 bar fill. Stand by. Two magazines down and we are still over 200 bar. That's three magazines and we're down to 200 bar. So let's talk for a minute about those chronograph results. Um, first of all, this is a powerful 22 caliber air gun. Um, 40 foot pounds in 22 cal with an 18 grain pellet. Um, uh, that is a little bit faster than most people say is accurate. Um, I guess accuracy has yet to be determined. But for testing, what I'm gonna do is fill it to 200 bar and then I'm going to fire five shot groups. When I look at that shot string, what I'm seeing is if you take 10 or 12 pellets, you're seeing between 25 and 30 feet per second spread. And until you get out past 50 yards, eh, maybe 40 yards, you're probably not going to see a ton of point of impact shift within that five shot or 10 shot or 12 shot group. So 
for testing, I'm doing five shot groups and I'm gonna do multiples of those. Um, really, the ownership experience of this gun, this is gonna be true of any unregulated PCP that you buy, you're gonna to have to learn the velocity curve that your rifle shoots at, and then you're gonna to have to work to maximize that. So this rifle comes to us from Nixon to Nixon USA, which is a Donnie FL company. And in specifying how this is gonna work, uh, Donnie FL has specified a heavier spring. So this rifle has that heavy spring in there. It's my understanding that if you order one of these and you ask, um, you can get the lighter spring included with your purchase through Donnie FL. Um, that's gonna give you a different ownership experience. You're not gonna hit those high powers um, but you might get a longer, um, less descending and more of kind of a rainbow type of shot string. So that might be an advantage to you if you're not trying to, you know, set records for air gun power. Now, a thousand feet per second is too fast in my opinion for 18 grain pellets. But what this speaks to is the possibility of using JSB redesigns in the 25 grain range, um, or maybe even some light slugs like FX hybrids may fire well in this gun. Not what I'm testing on the bench here today. I've got JSB 18.13 grain pellets, and that's what we're gonna shoot. So I'm gonna set it at, or I filled it to 200 bar. I'm gonna get the scope zeroed, and then I'm gonna shoot a series of five shot groups, and we'll see how she turns out. So I'll be back with you in just a minute as soon as I get the scope adjusted. All right, I've got a camera set up on a target downrange at 40 yards. We're gonna shoot five shot groups with the Nixon Ozark TW. Um, again, shooting the JSB 18.13 grain pellets. And we'll see how she does. We've got a little bit of a wind coming behind. You can probably see it in the umbrella, not too strong. Um, Officially, uh, Apple's saying 10 miles an hour, but I don't think we're getting the full brunt of that um, here on the Donnie FL range. So let's see how she does. can see the target moving in the wind so we'll let this gust go by. You do have to shoot air rifles in the wind. I just feel it's a little unfair when the target backer is actually moving on you. All right, four more just like that. All right, that's a solid group. That dropped a little bit lower than I hoped. Yeah. 
have a, like a sound machine on, on like white noise. Yolanda's here. Everybody say hi to Yolanda. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we love a visit from our host, Yolanda. <laughs> Always the best part of a video. Yeah. I think she's got snacks, so. <laughs> Hurry up and get your work done, PJ. All right, that's a pretty good group. Let's go down and take a look. In fact, I'm gonna take you with me because some of you will wanna count my steps or something to make sure I'm getting them all in today. We're gonna head down 40 yards and take a look. I got two very, very nice groups and then two that wandered just a little bit. But this should give you an idea of the kind of accuracy that you can expect from what's intended to be kind of a, a budget air gun. So there's the uh, downrange camera. It's been doing its job. And so this is the first group here. And yeah, those guys wandered out a little bit. That's at least an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters. Uh, and then we're down here, probably three quarters of an inch. We came over here that's about an inch and that might be i don't know between those two half inch three quarters of an inch we'll give you a close-up on on those so you can be sure but not bad accuracy at 40 yards I've got Josie on the bench. She is going to take some shot on some peeps downrange. Josie's safety is right here, pulling it back. It's got a lever, it goes from safe to fire. So make sure you find your target. So see the target right there? It's going to be to the right of that on the ground on a brick. So lever safety. I can do it. Already cocked. Shoot the peep on the right. Did you get it? Yeah. It All right. Flying. Give me the one on the left. Okay. shot. <laughs> two for two on the peeps. So that's 50 yard accuracy with the peeps. That's not too bad. Um, and rifle on safe. Awesome. I guess I did teach him something along the way. <laughs> oh, that's just fun. So final thoughts on the Ozark TW. I do love the integration of a wood stock on an air gun like this. Um, the adjustability of the butt stock is a nice touch. Um, and it does make the rifle overall pretty light, um, but the wood just has a really nice feel to it. And uh, if you catch it just right in the light, uh, and it's hot today, so I'm staying in the shade, uh, but this, there is beauty to the walnut on here. If you can take the time to learn how the gun behaves at different velocities, um, you're gonna be rewarded with a gun that you get 
loads of shots out of. And I would say based on what I've shot here today, which is, you know, 30, 40 shots on one fill just from 200 bar, um, I'm all hitting basically same point of impact out to 40 and 50 yards. If you want to go farther, you're going to have to figure out that, that curve um, and make it work for you. Uh, but I'm finding this to be a very accurate budget air gun. Um, and I think long term, I may swap out that lighter spring just to bring that velocity down a little bit. And I think I would see significantly more um, shots. So you guys will have to let me know if you want to see a more long term review on that. It's not something I'd be able to do immediately, but uh, down the road it might be a possibility if there's interest in it. So please let me know in the comments if there's some interest. Um, I think you're getting quite a bit of air gun for your money here. Foster fill, side lever, Picatinny, adjustable buttstock. I didn't talk about this, but you do have a transfer port adjustment on the other side. So you do have the opportunity, if you want, to drop that power down uh, a little bit. And uh, again, that might be something worth um, playing around with over a long period of time. Um, resettable safety, um, it's manual. You've got plenty of air on board. Um, just a lot of gun for the money. And I think if you're in the market for something like this, uh, worth checking out. Definitely you wanna put a quality optic on it. Um, it has enough accuracy to where if you skimp on optical quality, uh, that's going to put you behind um, behind the shot string, so to speak, in terms of what you're able to ultimately get out of it. Um, it's a good offhand shooter, um, but it's also capable of, of accuracy that makes it worth shooting off a bench. And for that, I'd recommend the Sabre Tactical Bottle Clamp. I don't think I'd want to try and screw in a pick mount here. There's just not a lot of wood here. Um, I think you're better off with the bottle clamp out front. And that makes it super easy to put a bipod on. And even if you're just going to walk around the field at some point, you're probably going to want to be on a bench to sight it in or, or do some, some fun shooting. So I think that's about it for the Ozark TW. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I do appreciate uh, the feedback. And if you have time and haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing the video because it helps us out to be able to bring more stuff to you on the channel. Until the next video, everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and I'll see you around.